it's Jess. Welcome and welcome back to the Not Curry Bradshaw YouTube channel. In this video, we have to cover a lot from the penultimate episode of season one. So let's dive right in. Let me get my notes so I don't forget anything or anyone because y'all know it's a lot of names and people and moving parts and twins who got the same name. I feel like that made sense in the books, but for the sake of a TV show, let's get some differentiation here. Anywho, so Otto announces to the small council that the king has died and that his dying wish was for Aegon to be named his heir instead of Rhaenyra. And the small council is like, they looking at each other like, okay, cool, so we can finally move ahead with our plans because they intended to supplant Rhaenyra all along and it becomes clear to Alicent that like oh so y'all was scheming behind my back the whole time and they're like girl of course we were patriarchy you're not a valuable member of this council and so Lord Beesbury is the only person who was like what y'all was talking about is treason I knew Viserys his whole life that man wanted his daughter to be his heir and I don't know what the fuck type of time y'all on but don't play in my face and Christian Cole immediately makes a mistake and kills this man they won't even let them take his body away they gotta sit there with the courts until they figure out how to commit treason so Lord Commander Westerling of the King's Guard tells Sir Christian Cole like you don't fucked up you need to go on and surrender your cloak and your sword you are definitely not worthy because you gotta remember he didn't already lost his temper and killed an innocent man once before now once again you done made a mistake and killed an older gentleman who's a part of the small council girl get your shit together and so they draw swords and they about to come to blows and everybody like okay just calm down it's fine we can't do shit we're not gonna leave until we come up with a game plan for how we're gonna commit treason right so Lord Commander Westerling takes off his cloak and he's like, you know what? I serve the king and unless there's a king here, I don't owe none of y'all shit. So he dips. He's like, I resign. Take my cloak. Take my sword. He done turned in his gun and his badge, baby. He out of there. And that's something about loyalty. And for a second, I was like, oh my God, are they about to kill him? But they let him go. So Allison is trying to go and tell the kids that their daddy is dead. Why does Helena say there's a beast beneath the boards? She used to be dropping these little gems and even watching the current season. I'm like, what was she talking about? Who is the beast beneath the board? Oh, I know who the beast beneath the boards was. We'll get there. It just came to me. Okay. So they can't even find Aegon's little punk ass. Okay. He's not even in the castle. So they're running around the streets of Silk, aka the red light district, aka where the sex workers be at and flea bottom, right? He is not with the sex workers. Okay. He is elsewhere. Don't nobody know where he is. So. Otto sends the twins, Eric and Eric, to find Aegon. And he tells them, if you find him, bring him to me first and nobody else. Allison sends Sir Christian Cole to go find Aegon and says, don't bring him to nobody but me first. Meanwhile, Rhaenys wakes up to find that she has been imprisoned in her room. Which is some bullshit because it's just like, baby, don't don't play in my face like this. Like, I am a noble lady and you feel you got to lock me away. And I think she surmises that like, okay, some shit done happened. So Allison comes to Rainey's and pleads with her to back their claim to get her house on board for Egon. And I love this exchange. Rainey's is such a real one. Like, Rainey's is like, the word of my house is not fickle. We said we ride with Rhaenyra. We said we was going along with what um, Viserys wanted. When last I checked what Viserys wanted. So whatever you got going on, it ain't really got nothing to do with me. This is what I love, though. She tells Allison, you've never thought to, like, strike out on your own. You've never wanted the Iron Throne for yourself. Because, mind you, Allison was ruling in Viserys' stead when he was ill. But it was always kind of, like, behind her father. So Rainey says to her, you toil in service to men. You toil in service to your daddy, to your husband, and now to your son. And she says, you desire not to be free, but to make a window in your prison. I said, let me tell you something about Rainey. She'll tell you a joke. She won't tell you a lie. A real one. We love her. Ugh. So, um, Allison can't even really do anything with that. She's just like, girl, I'm going to leave you with your thoughts you know i have some shit to offer you if you want to come to our side i'm a dip because you just sprayed me with my own tea so everybody's looking around for egon again in the red light district of king's landing 
And this one particular lady, um, and Amon is with Sir Christian Cole while they're on the streets of Silk looking for Egon. And the whole time, Amon is kind of in Christian Cole's ear, like, I would be a better leader. I would be a better person to be king. And it's like, am you a scheming ass little person? But of course he is. He's always wanted to be that girl, even though in the line of succession, he's not that girl. So the twins go to a fighting pit and the one twin is like, look around and it's all these little blonde children, okay, that are being forced to fight to the death. They have their teeth and their nails sharpened and they're being forced to fight to the death in these fighting pits because these are kids that just belong to their illegitimate kids or they don't really belong to anybody. Like the small folk, as they're called, like the regular citizens of King's Landing aren't doing great, okay? So the one twin is like, this is the kind of king that you want to follow. Look at these illegitimate kids. This is where we'll be hanging out, knowing that these are his kids fighting in these pits like he's not a good person. So the white worm, actually knows where Egon is and sends somebody to the twins to say like, hey, tell Otto to come holla at me. So she tells him in exchange for stepping in to protect these kids that are in these fighting pits, I will tell you where Egon is. And he says, you know what? I'll look into it. We know he lying. I don't, don't care about nobody but his house and the nobles and getting power. He don't give a damn about these regular citizens, right? So the twins go and find Egon under this altar. I think he was at the Scepter of Baylor. And of course, he asked him for his mama. He running away. He telling them, like, I don't want this. Like, if my daddy really did, either way, I don't really want this. Ask somebody. Get somebody else to do it. I don't want to do this. And Eamon is loving this because Eamon is like, baby, I've been ready. I've been ready to step in. So there's a, a fight between the twins and Sir Christian Cole to see, like, who's going to, like, win to take him to whom, right? So Egon, well, Rhaenys' words got through a little bit to Alicent because she tells her dad, like, I'm nothing but a pawn to you. And she's saying, like, I don't want bloodshed. And I don't want a whole war. Like, let's send some reasonable terms to Rhaenyra. And Otto was like, ain't no reasoning. Like, her and her allies, will, they will rally. They will kill you and your kids, like, to secure her position. That's not a thing. And once again, he tries to manipulate her by bringing up her mama. And it's just like, Allison, girl, these people are working you every which way but lose. Like, you don't have no real allies here. You're just being used, like Rainy said. So, oh, Egon got taken to his mom instead of the hand. That's where, where this conversation took place. And so on the one hand, Otto was like, okay, you bested me, but, you know, whatever. So, Allison goes to her room, and here come Lars, lurking ass. And he got some tea, but in order for her to get the tea, she got to go show feet in chat rooms. Like, that's his whole vibe, which makes sense. He has this, this disability with his foot, I guess he likes to see perfect feet, quote unquote. Okay, girl, whatever. So he tells her that the way that Otto found out about where Egon was before her is that there is a web of spies or spiders. Um, and that her lady in waiting, Talia, is one of these spiders who goes back and reports to this person all the tea from the Red Key. And the only way that you're going to maintain power or keep shit under lock is if you kill that spider, you got to cut the head, cut the snake off the head, cut the head off the snake in order to stop this whole, like, I'm mixing metaphors here, but in order to stop this web of spies, you got to kill the head spider. We'll say that. Um, so they decided they're going to set her house on fire. I don't know why Laris is brand loyal to arson. Why you always send somebody's house on fire? What is that about? What's your obsession with fire, babe? So Eric with an E, I think goes to free Rhaenys out of loyalty to Rhaenyra. And I love this. It's like, yes, be loyal to your word. Do what you said you was going to do. And Rhaenys is like, I can't leave my lease. I cannot leave my baby, her dragon. That is the beast beneath the boards. So while he's telling her, you need to get on a ship and take your ass on somewhere, they get separated in this large crowd that's being um, put together for Egon's coronation. So... They get to what I think is the Sept of Baylor, and 
um, where this announcement is going to be made. So Egon is telling his mom, like, I know my daddy didn't like me. I know, like, he just didn't see it for me. Rhaenyra was basically his only child to him. So why are we doing this? I don't want to do this. And Allison calls him an imbecile. And it's just like, when your granddaddy started trying to talk to you about killing Rhaenyra, don't listen to him. And it's just like, girl, you have no power here. No one's listening to you. No one cares about you. So they announced this lie to the people of King's Landing that Viserys' dying wish was for Aegon to be named his heir instead of Rhaenyra. And there's some applause. Now, mind you, the whole time Aegon don't really do this. He don't really want to do this until he gets up there and starts spilling his beat. People cheering for him. There's all this pomp and circumstance. And he's like, okay, I might go fuck with these. I like this a little bit. One of the worst things that could have happened to everybody. So Rhaenys takes this opportunity to sneak away to the dragon pit, right? So once they announce Aegon as the new king of the Seven Kingdoms and the first man and the Roinar and all this stuff. What's the Roinar? I need to look that up. Um... Rhaenys makes a Beyonce level entrance on her dragon. She came in there and cleared them folks at, okay? She slid through there. And Allison is a true mother because she stood in front of Aegon to take what she assumed was going to be this um, dragon fire. And, you know, I say this as not a mother, but couldn't have been me, okay? And instead of Rhaenys just like letting the chopper sing they just yell in their face which i'm sure is equally scary but i feel like it was her letting allison know i also don't want blood bloodshed but let this be a warning to you don't play in my face like that like you imprison me girl like i have a dragon i'm a real one out here in these streets don't try to spray me with my teeth and manipulate me and then she takes off I loved this scene. I am just obsessed with the dragons. I want a dragon. My birthday is coming up. If somebody can't send me a dragon, okay? I would honor my dragon. You know, I would raise it right. They're just like big puppy babies, big puppy lizard babies. I love them so much. But I love when a dragon makes an entrance and an exit. The CGI is worth it, okay? Budget, budget, budget. So that's how the penultimate episode of season one ends. I'll be back for episode 10 so that we can start talking about season two. Be sure to like and comment and subscribe and join my Patreon. And let me know if you're interested in exclusive content for the Patreon in the comments. Keep it cute. Keep it cute. Don't come in here being weird. Okay. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.